During this video we're going to take a look at how we can visualise InfluxDB data on a Raspberry Pi Zero. Now there are ways of getting trends up um, and UI interfaces on Node-RED which we'll cover in other videos but they don't easily allow you to look at trend time series data over prolonged months, years, days um, uh, so this is where a database like InfluxDB really adds value so if we can remember our um, flow from uh, previous videos we, ha we are pushing the data so we have this um, inject injecting data every second and we can see the message payload here so we'll just stop it and we're injecting a timestamp, temperature and density into InfluxDB and this is our InfluxDB server so we've set that up with information here, the login etc and then this is the database project and the measurement is automatically generated by this node inside InfluxDB time precision is seconds, this isn't critical data we're looking at but Unlike the 64-bit version of InfluxDB that does come with a dashboard viewer, the 32-bit version of InfluxDB is, is pretty limited with that. So you need something else. But to be honest, you can still use Grafana on 64-bit, and we'll cover that on another video. So, But for this video, we're focusing on the Raspberry Pi uh, Zero. So what is Grafana? Grafana is a dashboard tool that allows you to visualize your data either on an edge device, which we're doing here with the Raspberry Pi, or you can send it and put it on a virtual machine or have a cloud account and do it that way. It also has alarm functionality, um, but it allows multiple people to, to log in and, and see your, 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 your trends, but you can also put some you know basic actions on that, which we'll cover in future videos. So it's a, it's a real powerful visualization tool for time series data. I've already installed um, Grafana on this Raspberry Pi Zero, but I'll go through the process because I found a few of these and some were easier to use than others. Um, but this one, um, these commands seem to work the best. So the first thing is we've got to get Grafana from, um, uh, from the cloud, from uh, GitHub, um, and then this process takes us through downloading it into a repository and then installing it. So the first process we've got to get the uh, software and you can see here I've got my screen in old person eyesight mode but this is the command if we hit enter it may say I've already got it but we'll see, we'll see what happens. Now it's downloading it so it probably just copy over the version that I've already got but that's fine I wanted to show you the process so we'll let that finish and then this next command looks like it's installing um, uh, users, but it um, seems to be critical to the process, so I'm just following it through. So as you can see here, I already have the, the latest version, so it hasn't installed it, but the first time you run this, it may may do it. Um, then we're going to run, then we'll run, then we'll run this command. So as you can see, this is unpacking all of my uh, Grafana packages now. So this is installed this, I think, in my APT list. Um, so if I now perform an update, it should install all of my, all of my Grafana packages. So it's done that update. So the, the last thing to do is to start the Grafana service. So that's that's been successful. To see if the, the service has started, you can go back to your web browser. And I've already got one here that I prepared earlier. Um, it's your IP address or your domain name with 3000 is the port that Grafana uses. So I, I can see here to enable the, the auto start function manually, we got to enable it in the system control. Um, so this is the command. Hit enter on this. Now that this is, is complete, we'll do a reboot and we'll make sure that everything starts up without us going into the terminal again. As you can see, 
Grafana has now started up. Before I go back in here and, and log in, I just wanted to check a few things. Last time I installed Grafana on this device, it caused all sorts of issues with InfluxDB and I was getting here, it couldn't open up port 8086. Well, that, that's okay now. My message payloads is working, so node red is good. So let's go back to Grafana. Um, and to, to log in the first time, you can see here there's no way to, to register a new user or anything like that. So what you need to be aware of is the default login is admin and the password is admin. And when I've done this, it should ask me to register a new password, which I will type in now. And here we have Grafana. So this is our first look at Grafana. Now, so the first thing you need to do is add a data source. So we can add a data source here. And you see all sorts of different options. Well, we're InfluxDB. And just a few things to, to, to be wary of here. You think this is typed in, but it's not. Click on it. And when it goes white like that, it's typed in. That will catch you out. We're basic uh, authentication. And then you have to remember your password and login that you've set up for um, uh, Grafana. Now, if you're using the, the videos that I've set up before, um, the, for the Pi Zero, um, our user was Pi and our password was Raspberry, all lowercase. Then you need the database name, which is Zero project. Again, this is the database name in InfluxDB and we need to use the, um, type in here the username and password again. So let's type that in. Rasp I'll just put a capital R. So again, the password is the same. Um, and then uh, everything else you can leave as default. You can you can rename this this data if you want, but uh, we'll keep it influx DV. And then when you're ready, you can click on save and test. So it will save the data source. And then down here, I can see my data source is working. So I now have my data connected to Grafana. Now I've um, added my data source to Grafana. I'll show you how easy it is to to create a a quick dashboard with that data. So let's just remind ourselves here, this is the, the, the panel down the, down the left hand side. I, I have a dashboard I, I, I've started here, but uh, let's do create new dashboard just to take you through the process. Um, let's create a visualization first and there's no data there, which is what I explained. I'm going to stick to graph but you have all these different options here, heat maths, dashboard, and then we can start doing alarms, but we're just going to focus on visualization for now. So go to my query, and you can see here my measurement is set to default. Well, this is my data source I've just added. So with this set, the first thing I have to select is my measurement. Now, if you can remember that um, on my... Um, node red, I set up my measurement to be flow meter. So let's just jump around a little bit here. So there's my node red node, and here I set flow meter. So now Grafana has linked to InfluxDB. It knows my measurement is flow meter, and here now I can start selecting my values. So there's my my density. Um, you see here it's just labeled it as A. And it says flow meter mean. Well, it's because it's waiting for us to give it a, a tag. Okay, it doesn't pull that through automatically. And when I've done that, I can see here density. Now, um, to add the second data point, the easiest thing to do is just to, to copy or duplicate. And then where it says density there, I can change that to temperature and then type in temperature for my tag and get to enter and I can see here now my, my trend at the top and I I can start doing some advanced settings and I can start messing around with other stuff down here for alarms um, but let's focus on the data and this is why I, I, I really love Grafana I can especially for time series data I can zoom in 
and it doesn't start to aggregate my data. I see my, my real data. I have a, a real powerful tool up here, so I can do last seven days, and you can see you know, where I've had no data. Um, but I'll keep this running now for as long as possible, and I can zoom in, and it will automatically pick that data point up. I want to turn off temperature. I can just look at... Um, uh, sorry, turn off density, I can turn off the density and vice versa. So now I can just look at one trend or I can look with both of them. I can change the colours. I just think it's really easy for for checking that you, you've, you your data from your database is good. Now there are more advanced features. This was just a quick introduction to finish off, um, you know, the, the series of videos. So let's just recap. We've installed Node-RED. We've used InfluxDB node in Node-RED to push simulated data into InfluxDB. We've installed InfluxDB, um, but on a Raspberry Pi Zero, which is a 32-bit operating system, we have no visualization. So now we've installed Grafana, which is a real powerful time series visualization tool, so we can see our data. So what's next? Well, the next is this remove the simulated data and start putting some sensors on Node-RED and see what we can see with real data and see how we can start using alarms and everything within Node-RED or Grafana to generate simple alarms for, for users to get notification. So I hope you can see now this series is starting to build up and we've got a useful edge device with some nice visualization. Let's um, keep building on this. So. Don't forget to hit the notification bell because there's quite a few videos coming out. Thanks for listening and hope to see you soon. As you can see, Grafana has now started up. Before I go back in here and, and log in, I just wanted to check a few things uh, because last time I had in last time I installed Grafana on this device, it caused all sorts of issues with InfluxDB, and I was getting here it couldn't open up port 8086. Well, that that's okay now. My message payloads is working, so Node Red is good. So let's go back to Grafana. Um, and to, to log in the first time, you can see here there's no way to, to register a new user or anything like that. So what you need to be aware of is the default login is admin and the password is admin. And when I've done this, it should ask me to register a new password, which I will type in now. And here we have Grafana. So this is our first look at Grafana. Now, we can't create any dashboards at the moment because we haven't linked any data. So the first thing you need to do is to um, so the first thing you need to do is add a data source. So we can add a data source here, and you see all sorts of different options. Well, we're InfluxDB. 
And just a few things to, to, to be wary of here. You think this is typed in, but it's not. Click on it, and when it goes white like that, it's typed in. That will catch you out. Where basic uh, authentication, and then you have to remember your password and login that you've set up for um, uh, Grafana. Now, if you're using the, the videos that I've set up before, um, the, for the Pi Zero, um, our user was Pi and our password was Raspberry, all lowercase. Then you need the database name, which is Zero Project. Again, this is the database name in InfluxDB, and we need to use the um, type in here the username and password again. So let's type that in. Rasp I'll just put a capital R. So again, the password is the same. Um, and then uh, everything else you can leave as default. You can you can rename this this data if you want, but uh, we'll keep it influx DV. Well, you can rename the, up here um, your your connection name. We'll keep it as influx DB. And then when you're ready, you can click on save and test. So it will save the data source. And then down here, I can see my data source is working. So I now have my data connected to Grafana. So hopefully, if I do a new dashboard, um, let's choose visualization. And I can start adding information to, to my trend here.